Hey guys, today I have for you a scrolling text display. So you might be wondering, what makes this so different from every other scrolling text display that has been released so far? Well, first of all, each pixel is only one tall and one wide. And the way I do this is you, I have a repeater on three ticks and an observer uh, checking for any changes. The reason why you do this is because if you just have a line of repeaters on one tick or an observer chain, you're going to get a pixel that's three wide. If you increase it to two, it's going to be one and a half. The half is because you have a little bit of blinking. And now if you have three, you would expect that you get something that's less than one and a half. But that's not the case. What's going to happen is that you're going to get a two white pixel and so to solve this you uh, put a t flip-flop feeding into the repeater line and so this is actually a very unusual t flip-flop but it works so let's take a look flip it once and you get one redstone lamp turning on works the same whether it's on or off and so if you actually feed in the second uh, toggle uh, three redstone ticks later, the same as the repeater, you actually get two pixels side by side. So that means that you can address each individual redstone lamp by itself. And with that, you can have a continuous uh, scrolling text display with each pixel being one block only. Over here, I have a few corners. So this is an outside corner. Unfortunately, I couldn't really make an outside corner very well because it's really limited by space so the characters have to stretch so this is just the corner again as you can see it stretches this is an inside corner with very little stretching and then this is a hard corner with basically no stretching at all another thing to take note when building the display is that on the very last repeater of this display you actually need to add one more repeater onwards this is due to the way repeaters update so the last repeater in a chain uh, doesn't update as fast as it should so that's why you actually need another repeater there and then over here uh, you if your corners are very large you just add another t flip flop or if they are very short you can just have uh, inverter over here so comparator inverter over here which feeds into the next uh, line of repeaters anyway guys let's get into the character ROM so this is a character ROM with 128 addressable characters so what I did was that I took ASCII characters and I tried to make them uh, look uh, as best as I could in a 5 by 4 uh, area. The reason why I have it 5 by 4 is that the very last column is actually the space between characters. But anyway, that's beside the point. This is the ASCII character. So up here I have 32 control AS uh, ASCII characters which you don't actually print at all ever and it's pretty much useless to me. The reason why I left those spaces blank like that is so that if you want to include emojis for whatever reason you could include them in also there's another uh, control character which is delete down there uh, so but i you know i just left it as zero to eight and all the way down uh, some of the symbols are a little bit hard to figure out what they are like this is a hashtag dollar sign a percentage sign and symbol and this one which is really the worst which is the at symbol. If you have any recommendations on how I can prove any of these uh, designs, it would be greatly appreciated. Over here, because I didn't want a double wide character because I wanted each character to be printed at the exact same time, uh, this is an M, that's a W, and the difference is between the H is the H has one in the center, and the M is top heavy, the W is bottom heavy. Uh, it's something similar with the lowercase letters, which is uh, the top, the second one from the top is turned on for M, 
The second one from the bottom is turned on for W and H is just a normal lowercase h. And yeah, that's it for the ASCII characters. So the character ROM uses walls. And the reason why I use this is that so that I don't have to use any pistons, which is a different form of ROM. And that also means that I can actually increase the number of bits coming out from the decoder as much as I want. And so another thing is that that each column is delayed by three redstone ticks so and it reads from a comparator which either turns on or turn off from this composter here which is pushed by this piston over here and this just uses my basic uh, one unary one white tolerable decoder which you can find a video on my channel if you ever want to rebuild this for whatever projects you have and above here you have your phrase wrong, which is something I'm really happy about that I managed to design. Which is basically the problem was if I wanted variable length phrases, means phrases with either five or a hundred characters long, I didn't want to have to build the entire decoder uh, to accommodate uh, 100 characters each for each individual address. So what I decided to do is reserve one axis for expansion so over here you can see uh, the rest of the addresses i haven't actually put anything in but the more characters you want to put in you can just expand it vertically upwards so over here i have two addresses with 20 characters each and then what happens is that uh, observers get updated at each level uh, with a 12 redstone tick delay between each level so as you can see the observer feed into the block over here which updates the trapdoor which then changes the shape of the wall which then sends the signal down and so depending on how long a phrase you want you can build it however high you want so these are 20 this is about 100 characters high and yeah that's it for the character phrase sorry the phrase wrong and now one of the things I'm really happy about, another thing I'm really happy about is that this uh, system really doesn't have many collisions at all. Basically what happens is that when I change uh, what is played, as you can see here, it says subscribe to Kaizen. So if I just increase the tick rate to 80, the next phrase that's going to play is apply to Malintac. And the reason why there's no collisions when I change uh, the phrase that I'm reading from is because I actually have an initiation signal that comes in over here, uh, which you can actually turn on or turn off using this piston over here. And what happens is that when a phrase is done, an initiation signal comes in and then it sends the signal to decode for the next phrase. And to produce the initiation signal, I have this system over here. So every time a character comes in, it resets this uh, clock over here. So as you can see, it goes from 15 down to 11 or 10 and goes back to 15 because it's constantly being reset. But once uh, the phrase stops coming in, uh, there's no more reset signal. So everything decays down. So from 2 to 1 and then goes to 0, sends the initiation, sig initiation signal which then goes into the decoder and then it starts sending the reset line. The reason why I wanted this specific thing was instead of having just a tail end of the phrase which then tells the system to send the next phrase was because I wanted something that was as robust as possible. So basically what happens is that you can have this entire system partially loaded or your server crash or whatever and basically the initiation signal can be for whatever reason get lost and doesn't get sent to the decoder and the thing will reset by itself and send another initiation signal. The only thing that has really ever broken for me which only ha has happened once in all my testing was this decay clock over here uh, just for some reason stopped decaying and I think basically what happened was that the uh, comparator for just forgot to subtract and the easy way to fix that is you just turn this on and off again and the decay clock will start working again. 
and so everything gets fed up to here i only use five bits uh to have only have five addressable sorry five bits of addressable phrases because then everything fits in quite a nice area um but yeah that's about it that's my scrolling text display so another thing to take note is that uh, it can be really annoying to actually have to input the bit the binary data for your uh, characters so uh, basically i asked one of my friends which is uh, uh optic or mesontic gaming I'll, I'll link his youtube channel below if he knew anybody or knew any program that could convert external binary data into in-game block patterns so first of all to produce the binary data first you can just search on google for a text to binary converter and make sure you select ascii uh, and then after that um, that's how you produce your binary data and so then uh, optic told me about a guy called theorem which i will link below and he had a program uh, which i will include in the script folder of this minecraft save uh, which you could just change the text file so you can just put input the binary data into the text file with each new line being the next uh, byte or however many bytes per line you need uh, and it will print out the character so i also linked his video on how to use it but i'll just quickly showcase what you're supposed to do so you have scripts script load yeah bin pattern load it in and then type bin pattern and then read from file and then just bottom will do and then you want to be looking at the direction you want to paste it in first which will then produce uh, your binary data pat block pattern into the wall what you're going to do next is uh, you're going to try to flip everything vertically so you're going to click rotate 0 270 Sorry, you need to cut first. Rotate 270, paste it in. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna replace uh, all the smooth quartz with air. And then you're gonna replace all the observers with trap doors. So right now, because I'm facing uh, north, I actually need the facing to be in the well, regardless whether it's not, it either can be north or south. So I'm just going to do north. And over here, you can see you have your trap doors, which are going to hold the data, your character data. And so this is how you would have your walls. So every time the trap door changes shape, the it also changes the shape of the wall. And then you just take this. And then after that, I need to rotate it once more and then you just feed it, uh, paste it in uh, to this little space over here. And just a reminder, this part over here, this right part over here is actually the clock signal. So you actually only have seven bits of data, seven bits of data, which equates to the 128 characters of ASCII. And then the last one over here is just the clock signal. Anyway guys, this is my scrolling text display. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Hit that bell icon to be notified. And last but not least, stay zen. Bye.